A while back I made a video where I used MAX7219 module, which is normally used to control 8x8 LED dot matrix, to control 7 digit 7 segment display. When that was done, I connected 8 generic LEDs and managed to control them as well. From here, I am one step away from creating custom 7 segments display and having 4 of them, I am ready to create a cool looking clock. If you want to see how this turns out, stick around. For this project I found a different type of MAX7219 module. It is great as you can plug it in on a custom PCB that I designed for this project. When you look at the PCB design, it may seem super complicated, but it's really not. Here you can see the slot created to plug in MAX7219 display. Arduino would be plugged in here. You also have holes to solder in 30 LEDs that would make 4 7 segment digits and two dots making a colon. The four digits display I'm trying to create is nothing more than seven by four LED matrix where cathodes of seven LEDs of the single digit are making a row and are connected together and anodes of the four LEDs of a single segment type are making a column and are also connected together. You may ask why I label the first column as column two. In a situation where you control a 4-digit display with MAX7219, the first column is reserved for controlling decimal points. You do not have them here, but I would use column 1 to control two LEDs that will make a column separating hours from minutes. So here you see how those two LEDs would fit into the larger picture. This is how this matrix translates into the PCB layout. Each row and column is connected to appropriate pin of the MAX7219 module. Then we also connect MAX7219 to VCC, ground, data in pin goes to Arduino pin 11, load pin goes to Arduino pin 12 and clock goes to Arduino pin 13. Then we have several screw terminals, one to power the board from the 9 volt external power supply. It connects power supply to ground and VIN pin of Arduino. One to connect the D2 and D3 Arduino ports with interrupts. I am planning to use those pins to connect two push buttons through two pull-down resistors. In the next screw terminal I included connections for RTC modules. So 5 volts ground and A4 and A5 pins for I2C communication. Then we have another one that gives us two Arduino pins in case we want to include any other sensors like photoresistor, sound sensor, etc. I also provided additional 5 volt and ground connections in case they may be needed. With PCB design more or less ready, I have ordered it and after a couple of weeks the package has arrived. Let's unbox it. The quality of the PCB is great. I just hope I did not make any obvious mistakes in the design phase, as you can see, it is quite complicated. To start, I need to solder male header pins onto the MAX7219 module to be able to plug it in on my custom PCB board. Looks good. This will fit here onto the PCB, but we need some female header pins to create the socket for this module. Let's also solder some extra female pins to create the socket for Arduino Nano.
Now that it is done, let's turn PCB around and solder the LEDs that would lit individual segments. I found these wonderful wide angle LEDs which would work much better than your standard LEDs. I will solder just one digit first as this would give me a good idea if there is any major flaws in my design. The last thing you want to do is solder all 30 LEDs only to find out that the PCB is flawed and does not work. Done! With LEDs in place you can now plug in MAX7219 module. Fits perfectly. And then also let's plug in Arduino Nano. Let's write the simple code to lit those 7 LEDs one by one. We need to declare LED control library first and then declare LC object which represents MAX7219 module connected to digital pins 11, 12 and 13. We also need one variable to represent state of LEDs in the active digit. In setup function we configure the LC object by turning it on, configuring its brightness and turning all LEDs off to start with. In loop we set value of row bits variable in this way that only decimal point segment is lit, if applicable. Then we have the nested loop in which we output the value of row bits onto the LED display. And then we shift the bits by one, so in next iteration the segment A would be lit. With each iteration we lit consecutive segments, so B, C, D, etc. With the next execution of loop function the whole process starts again. And here is the moment I am always dreading. I am powering the Arduino. Will it work? Shoot, it does not. The LEDs do not light up one by one and if I touch the pins of MAX7219 all of them lit at once which is not the desired behavior. It took me a while to figure out what was wrong. I checked all the connections and they seemed fine and then I had a revelation. Since the MAX7219 is plugged on the other side of the PCB then uh, that means I'm working with the mirror image of the pinout layout and because of this I created the connections to data out pin and not to the data in pin. So this is bad news as this setup as is would not work. The good news is that it is possible to fix it. I broke off the faulty header pin and using the jumper wire I created the workaround which connected MAX7219 data in pin with Arduino pin 11. The module fixed this way still fits into the slot of the PCB. Let's connect the power to see if this solution works. Ha! Fantastic, it does. With this issue sorted, I was able to solder on the remaining LEDs. To be able to test them all, we need to slide change into the code. We add another nested loop to go through all four digits and for each digit we execute the original block of code. This way we lit all 30 LEDs one by one. Let's load the code to the board and see if it also works. This time no hiccups. Words cannot express the relief I feel that I managed to fix it and it works. Because otherwise all those hours building a PCB prototype, then spending the money ordering it and then putting all the components on, you could take it and just bin it. Complete waste of time. But now that works and I can build my clock. Fantastic. So being able to control all the LEDs, I am just a small step away from being able to build a large seven segments custom clock. But I will take that step in my next video. Thank you very much for watching. As always, like and share and subscribe to my videos. And if you want to support me, you can always do it either through PayPal or going to my Patreon website. I will see you in my next video. Over and out. Oh, I almost forgot. Here is a little teaser of the second part of this instructable. It is coming soon. Don't miss it.